Now let's see a case of a patient who presented with fever and there was a pomer rash when the patient was having uh, symptoms they were resolving. Now the case summary, this was a 30 years old male who presented with a uh, uh, rash which is shown in, shown in the picture. The patient's history before that is the patient had high grade fever going on for last five days. The fever was accompanied by severe body pains and aches and you see there were no other lateralizing symptoms. The patient only had severe muscle aches and pains. There was headache and there was retroorbital pain. What is the possible diagnosis and what is the treatment plan? In this video, we are going to discuss the diagnosis part of uh, this presentation. And in the next video, we are going to discuss how to manage this patient. Now, what is the diagnosis? The diagnosis most probably is dengue fever. You see patient has features of viral illness that is there is a diffuse uh, symptoms. There is generalized body aches and pains. Patient has no respiratory, no GI, no urinary symptoms and no respiratory or urinary symptoms and the patient has presented only with fever and when the fever starts settling down he starts developing a rash which is demonstrated on his picture of the hand. What are the other possible differentials? The differentials possible actually depend upon the uh, clinical presentation of patients with dengue. So we'll see what could be the possible differentials of a patient who presents with dengue fever. Now, what are the clinical features? Clinical features again depend on the patient's clinical stage with which the patient is presented. Now, what are different phases of dengue? You've got febrile phase, you've got critical phase and you've got convalescent phase. Now, what is a febrile phase? Febrile phase usually lasts from two to five days, but it can extend to more than five days. Some of the patient may have fever up to eight to 10 days even, but generally it is between uh, two to five days that patient has a febrile illness and then patient has some critical phase if this disease does not resolve. And then the patient has convalescent phase and generally in uh, about uh, eight to 10 days time, the disease is gone. Now, what happens in uh, the febrile phase? It typically begins with a certain onset of high grade fever. This is an acute febrile illness. Patient generally has these symptoms for two to seven days. And it is accompanied by facial flushing. There may be skin erythema, there may be generalized body aches, there may be myalgia, there may be arthralgia, there may be headache, there may be retroverbal pain, patient may have anorexia, nausea, and patient may even vomit. You see, some of the patient may have complaint of sore throat as well, and some of the patient have congested pharynx, and there may be uh, congestion in the conjunctiva, and the patient may present with uh, mucosal bleeds as well. So generally, it's a uh, non-specific type of uh, illness in which patient has generalized body pains and aches. And then you see on examination, there may be particular hemorrhages, the tourniquet test may or may not be positive and the patient may have tender hepatomegaly. The presence of tender hepatomegaly means the patient has serious illness and is gone into the critical phase. So it is usually not seen in the uh, febrile phase. The tender hepatomegaly generally develops when there is fluid leakage and the liver starts swelling and the patient has those symptoms. But it's not a feature of uh, the febrile phase itself. But if this feature is present, uh, this indicates the disease is going it into its complication. That's why I've mentioned this in the febrile phase that you must be very careful if the patient has right hypochondriac tenderness, be careful that this patient may be going into critical phase. And then what is the critical phase? Critical phase or phase of the plasma leaking. That is the blood vessels, they become leaky and the plasma moves out of the blood, blood becomes thick, there is hypovolemia, uh, the circulatory pressures, they start falling and patient has circulatory collapse. If the treatment is not uh, done uh, appropriately. Now, it is between three to five days and uh, may occur up to seven days and usually lasts for 48 hours. So once the critical phase starts, it lasts for 48 hours and then if the patient can survive that, then patient goes into the convalescent phase. So it usually begins between the third and fifth day and can be up to the seventh day, patient can have a start of the critical phase. Now, what happens in critical phase? You see in mild cases, uh, 
the leakage is uh, very minimum and the patient uh, recovers. So there is minimal leakage and it is transient and the patient recovers. But if the patient has severe uh, phase, there is a large amount of volume leakage. So this can result in significant volume depletion and circulatory failure. Now the patient in this critical phase, when it starts, patient becomes restless because of the hypoperfusion. There is cold, clammy skin, there is rapid thready pulse, and there is prolonged capillary filling time. You see, if you press the pulp like that, and you see the filling of the capillaries that is delayed, that indicates the patient has uh, slow or poor perfusion in the peripheral parts. The pulse pressure is narrow, that is, the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure becomes narrow. Patient may have abdominal pain, there may be persistent vomiting, patient is restless and there may be alteration in the conscious level. The fluid starts accumulating in the cavities. You may see on ultrasound that there is fluid diffusion and there is abdominal ascites. Patient has uh, mucosal bleeding, there may be enlarged tender liver which suggests severe congestion in the liver. And this is usually a severe form of uh, dengue fever when there is uh, congestion of the liver as well. And the patient can rapidly progress to profound and irreversible shock. So the recognition of the situation is very important. If a patient who has got a febrile illness and during the febrile illness, these features, that is patients develops persistent vomiting, there is restlessness, and the patient has abdominal pain and you see patient has low pulse pressure, there is features of poor peripheral perfusion, there is tender epidermogaly, this patient has gone into leakage phase and you have to be very, very careful managing this patient. Now, after the uh, critical phase, which usually lasts for 48 hours, patient, they go into the convalescent phase. Convalescent phase is actually the recovery from the disease. So what happens, there is improved appetite, the patient has generalized feeling of well-being, there is diuresis as the fluid which is leaked starts reabsorbing, the circulatory volume fills up, the renal perfusion improves and the urine output starts improving. Then there is a development of rash, we have seen that rash, this is called white isles in the area of a Red Sea. So you see there are white patches between the erythema. So this is a rash which develops when the patient starts having improvement. And then the platelet count starts improving and afterwards the leukopenia also starts improving. So the patient has improvement in both platelets and the leukocytes. And one thing to emphasize which is generally seen that large number of patients they are worried about the platelets. Platelets actually, uh, they just indicate the patient is deteriorating or improving and treating the thrombocytopenia does not help the patient. So this is a misconception. So we just see the platelet count. If it is deteriorating, it means the patient is uh, having a disease progression. And if this is improving, that means the patient is having a recovery. Now, uh, you see in the picture, this is the course of the dengue fever. You see during dengue fever in the early part what happens during the febrile phase the patient has generalized symptoms. The platelets they start uh, uh, declining towards the end of the uh, febrile phase and the patient's hematocrit that varies in uh, early phase it may rise slightly and then uh, when the critical phase starts it abruptly rises and when there is recovery it starts falling down. Similarly the urine output usually is maintained but in the critical phase the urine output goes down and when there is convalescence the urine output starts uh, increasing. So this picture demonstrates the rough uh, timelines in which the patient has the febrile phase, the critical phase and the uh, convalescent phase. Now what are the different clinical syndromes the patient may present with? The uh, patients with dengue may present with different type of uh, clinical features. They may present with flu-like illnesses. Then what could be the differential if the patient presents with flu-like illness? It may be influenza, maybe measles, it may be chikungunya. It's one of uh, very important differential because chikungunya presents in the same way as 
dengue fever, but it lacks that uh, critical phase. There is no plasma leakage in uh, chikungunya, and the patient usually recover without complication. Then adenoviruses, infectious mononucleosis, acute HIV zero conversion, they can all present with flu-like features. So if the patient presents with flu-like features, these are the different uh, differentials for this patient. And if the patient presents with rash, you can see the rash has to be differentiated from the rash of rubella, measles, scarlet fever, meningococcal infections, and certain drugs which can produce similar features. And then patients who present with diarrhea, you have to differentiate uh, rotavirus infection and patient may have food poisoning is one of the differentials. And, and if the patient presents with neurological symptoms, you have to consider meningoencephalitis and you have to consider the febrile fits if the patient, particularly the young patients, those uh, who develop the seizures. So meningococcal infection or meningoencephalitis and you have to consider febrile fits. And then you see patients who present with acute abdom abdomen, which is a very serious condition because uh, if misdiagnosed and abdomen is open, that can be uh, dangerous for the patient. Patients. So we have to recognize this patient is having dengue fever or actually surgical complications. So it has to be differentiated from acute appendicitis, uh, perforated viscous, acute cholecystitis, acute viral hepatitis, and even it has to be differentiated from uh, diabetic ketoacidosis. And then if the patient presents with shock, it is the septicemic shock, which is the main differential diagnosis and patient may also have cardiogenic shock. Keep in mind that in patients with the dengue, some of the patient may develop uh, carditis and they may have uh, shock because of the carditis, but generally it has to be differentiated from the other causes of uh, myocardial injury, particularly in older patients who may develop uh, myocardial infarction and present with shock. And then patients who got respiratory distress, you have to consider diabetic ketoacidosis, renal failure, or lactic acidosis as differential diagnosis. And then patients who've got cytopenias, you have to consider acute leukemias, aplastic anemia, ITP that is idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or TTP that is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, malaria, leptospirosis, typhoid fever, the, uh, typhus, bacterial sepsis, systemic lupus erythem erythematosus, acute HIV zero conversion. So these are different type of uh, differentials for the patient's cytopenias. And then disease monitoring. Disease monitoring actually requires serial testing in addition to the clinical mon monitoring of the patient. Clinical monitoring chart we will see when we see the treatment part of what we have to monitor. But when we investigate the patient, we sometimes require serial testing, particularly the counts and the hematocrit. So what we do is we go for CBC. CBC may show neutropenia with leukocytosis in the later phases of the disease when the patient develops uh, the profound type of shock, instead of leukopenia, there may be leukocytosis even. The patient may have changes in the hematocrit depending upon the phase of the disease. For example, in the febrile phase, the hematocrit may slightly rise because of a relative dehydration if the patient is not taking adequate fluids. But in the critical phase, the uh, hematocrit starts rising abruptly. And in the convalescence phase, when there is a reabsorption of the fluid, the hematocrit starts falling again. And then thrombocytopenia, which is usually seen in the later part of the febrile illness. And as the convalescence starts, the thrombocytopenia starts improving. So uh, we have to test the blood counts serially in these patients. We can go for the liver function testing. The patient has AST and rise in ALT, but the AST rises more than the ALT. And you see the rise in liver enzymes is more in dengue hemorrhagic fever than in uh, the simple dengue fever. And we may sometimes have to do additional testing depend on, depending upon the patient's condition. If the patient is more sick, we may need more tests. For example, uh, we may have to test serum electrolytes, the renal function test, including the blood urea nitrogen, the creatinine, to look for the presence of metabolic acidosis, that is, we have to do the arterial blood gas examination, we may have to do the calcium, the blood sugar, the cardiac enzyme, the ECG, the coagulation profile, uh, the MLAs, the ultrasound of the abdomen and chest, and we may require even chest X-ray. The lateral 
decubitus chest x-ray helps us in seeing if there is pleural effusion in the leakage phase but that can also be seen in uh, ultrasound which can be done easily because uh, sometimes it's difficult to move the patient for x-ray so you can do a bedside ultrasound and see if there is pleural or peritoneal fluid accumulation and then the diagnostic test to confirm the diagnosis they also depend upon the stage of the disease different type of tests are used to make a diagnosis of uh, dengue fever you see we can do dengue antibodies that is of the igm class we do it on uh, enzyme linked immunosorbent assay a paired sample is uh, very useful paired sample means the patient has one sample and then uh, after a certain time we do another uh, test and we see if the titter has improved so we can go for a pair testing that is usually more uh, confirmatory than isolated testing but in patients who've got a clinical setting and there is epidemic a single test may be very strongly suggestive that this patient has uh, this illness and then it becomes positive after five to seven days of illness that is the igm antibodies it is very sensitive for primary infection sometimes the secondary or a repeat infection it may not be very useful but in primary infection it is very very useful and then we can have igg antibodies again they are done on uh, enzyme linked immunosorbent assays you see again the paired igg is important a rising titter of igg antibody is very very suggestive that this patient is uh, having dengue in fact it is confirmatory usually becomes positive after day seven so uh, it may not be very useful in the acute febrile phase but later on in convalescence we can see and confirm the diagnosis on a paired sampling of the igg and then we got uh, immune chromatography that is strip testing these are rapid diagnostic tests for both igg and igm but problem is that they don't have a very good sensitivity and they have a cross reactivity with the other uh, antigens for example they may be positive uh, in uh, other flaviviridae infections or even rheumatoid arthritis or in malaria so they generally are not very helpful and they may confuse the clinical situation so we don't use them and then we can have the isolation of the virus we can have reverse transcriptase uh, pcr in the uh, early part that is in uh, before the uh, fifth day of illness and then virus can be a virus can be isolated using tissue cultures but that is usually reserved for research purposes so we can go for the uh, dengue virus isolation by rt pcr that may also tell us the different uh, types of uh, virus it's uh, dengue viruses it has uh, four type of uh, viral uh, genome that is dengue virus 1 2 3 and 4 and we can identify which type of uh, virus it is to have the uh, epidemiological evaluation of what type of uh, dengue virus is prevailing in the community and then we can use the ns1 the ns1 that is non structural uh, protein which is useful in uh, early febrile phase in making a diagnosis of dengue so depending upon the clinical presentation we can choose these different type of tests for example if the patient presents in the first four to five day we can go for a non-structural protein one that is ns1 testing and if required we can also go for an rna testing but if the patient presents after the fifth day we can go for uh, igm testing and if the patient presents after seventh day we can test both igm and igg testing and we can repeat these tests to confirm that if there is a rising titter this may confirm the diagnosis that patient has a uh, dengue infection and in the next presentation we are going to discuss uh, how we are going to treat uh, the patients who present with dengue illness